So the next thing we're going to try is instead of bullets, instead of water waves, we're going to try electrons. And, and I'm not going to, you know, like go through and derive this because we already know if that happens, what had occurred, if that happens, why it occurs. So I'm just going to kind of explain what the results of these are. So for an electron gun, So there's electrons shooting out of here, which I'll just draw E. So here's a bunch of electrons, and now here is that detector slit, or, the, or the, the double slit, and then now here is the detector, I should say. And, you know, you can think of it, you know, just, it's, by the way, there's a name for an electron gun, it's called a cathode ray tube, and that's precisely what it does. It, um, it uses a, 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 a metal and it induces a voltage, and it's kind of like the reverse of the photoelectric effect. That you induce a voltage and you pull electrons off of one, uh, off of one terminal or whatever, and they, they fly towards a, a slit, and some of those pass through, and so now you now get a pretty collimated beam of electrons, one after the other effectively. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna pass those electrons through from a cathode ray tube, and the results that, well, actually, predict what the results should be here. Just kind of draw with an initial guess what you would expect to happen if there's electrons passing through those double slits. Now, if you had predicted this, you have confirmed that you're sane. And if you've predicted that, you have also been wrong. <laughs> because this is where God starts playing pranks on us. The actual experimental results look just like this. Which is the most bizarre thing ever. Electrons should make that. Electrons are little balls of energy. They have a little bit of charge. We can pretty clearly see, I mean, well, no, we can't, but in theory, if you had a big enough microscope, you can see, hey, or you should be able to see, hey, there's an electron. It's a little, like, thing that kind of looks like a little particle, because we call it a particle. And those electrons should make exactly that distribution. So if I was the experimenter, here would be my very next notes in my journal. Why does this happen? This defies all normal, you know, like any sort of prediction that like Galileo, Newton, even, you know, through the 1800s, early 1900s, there's no reason to believe that particles should make an interference pattern like this. But the fact is, it does. So, how can we possibly explain that? The electrons should go through that top slit and pile up there, or they should go through that bottom slit and pile up there. The fact that they don't tells us, somehow or another, those electrons, in passing through those slits, somehow interfere with each other. And if, for whatever reason, the electrons that are going through the top slit seem to interfere with the electrons that are going through the bottom slit, and there is zero classical interpretation of this. There is no way that I should be able to throw a you know, um, a billiard ball that direction and a billiard ball that direction and have them interact on the other side of a wall. But that's exactly what happens here. So, the electrons seem to interfere with each other. And this is our first hint that something's really effed up about the universe, basically. Like, this should not happen. So, we have, a, we, we have a genius idea now. And instead of sending out a whole stream of electrons, like, you know, just like an a, a, a electron machine gun where we're sending out all these electrons, and so we're, we're going to try to avoid this possibility of those electrons interacting with each other and interfering with each other. So what we're going to do now is we're going to slow this electron gun down so that 
instead of sending out, you know, 10 to the 20 electrons per second, we're going to send out one electron per second, or one electron per minute, or something like that. So we're going to send individual. Electrons. All right, so we have a single electron, and that single electron is going to go forwards. We have a detector screen. Sorry, one second. But okay, so anyway, back to it. So we have a single electron that moves forwards, and one by one, we're going to let those electrons accumulate here. Now, now to be clear, uh, and, and we'll revisit this here very shortly, but we're not going to look at the detector screen after each electron. We're going to fire one electron at a time and very, very deliberately make the, the stream of electrons so slow that there is no possible way that the, the, the next electron will be shot out until after that, the, the previous one has already reached the screen. So if it takes a tenth of a second to get from there to there, we'll space them out every, you know, 30 seconds or something like that. So, you know, after a couple hours of this, we finally, you know, take the cloth off of the screen, and what should you see? So again, you know, sketch exactly what, what pattern you should see now. Now that we're very definitely sending just individual electrons, so, so that we can effectively avoid any chance of the electrons interfering with each other. So, in this case, if we're sending one electron at a time, there's no way that the electrons can interact with each other, so this is what we should get out. We should see that the electrons, you know, because they can't interfere, the electrons that we shoot out sh will be piling up there, or the electrons, if they go through that slit, will pile up there. So it's just kind of like we add them up over and over, and this is the result that we should get out. Very important word. Quantum mechanics doesn't care what should happen. This is what happens. I can't explain it. Well, I can and will explain it, but I can't understand it. Like, this is where the point of, if anyone ever tells you they understand quantum mechanics, stop listening to everything else they say. Because there, there is zero way of understanding how, why the universe does this. It, it is literally unexplainable. But, even sending single electrons, one by one, results in an interference pattern. And how do we reconcile this? The only possible way to explain why we don't get this pattern out when we literally just allow one electron at a time, again, this experiment, this pattern here, we, we can reasonably interpret that some of those electrons going through the top are interfering as, as, if, as with waves with the electrons going through the bottom. Like there's two sources of electrons that produce an interference pattern. We can't accept that anymore because there's no way for an electron up there to interact with that next electron 30 seconds later. It's already reached the screen. The only plausible way to explain this, and this is just where, like, I still get goosebumps why this happens. I don't know. But the electron, each individual electron, goes through the top slit, and, at the same time, goes through the bottom slit. That electron splits itself up, behaves like a wave, it disperses itself, and by the time it reaches the screen, the electron has d done exactly what waves do. The electron literally travels through both slits at the same time, interferes with itself, and produces an interference pattern like this. Again, single electrons. And, and I mean, this is, there is nothing more quantum mechanically na in nature than, than this direct finding right here. And then, you know, like, imagine being the first one who would actually do this experiment, and you have, 
Yeah, you can you can almost write your paper before you do it because there's no way this should ever happen. But if this is what you get out, like the first question is, what the hell did I do wrong? There, there's no way this should result. And no matter what changes you make to the experiment, this is what you keep getting out. So, I mean, this is why, like, being around in the early 1900s and, and being, you know, following along with this would have been just, like, amazingly fascinating because we see these results that you simply can't reconcile with any rationality. So, let's go on. It's not over yet. Okay, so the next step along the way. We've, <laughs> we've just discovered the strangest thing ever, and we've seen that even fundamental individual electrons somehow or another spread out, cancel each other out, and it's just even a single electron now, we can only say behaves like a wave. But that, that still, it defies reality. So we, we, have a clever, uh, we have a clever idea. And so let's say, like, these are electrons, they're particles. They're going to go through the top slit or the bottom slit. They might interfere on the other side of it, but let's just, like, let's set up some experiment to see which slit each electron goes through. And so we can kind of get a feel for, like, you know, is it the case they're all going through the top or through the bottom or, or what's happening here? So we're going we're gonna to find some way to detect which slit each individual electron goes through and see what, where this pattern develops. So we're going to set up now like this. We're at the same exact thing. We have electrons that we're going to throw through the screen at a very slow rate again. And here's the detector. But now what we're going to do is we're going to put a little beeper, or whatever you want to call it. We're going to put one at the top, on the, near the top slit, and one near the bottom. So whenever an electron goes through the top slit, this one might go beep. Whenever the electron goes to the bottom slit, it'll go boop, or something like that. So what we would expect to get is a series of beep, beep, boop, beep, beep, boop, 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 beep, boop, or something like that, you know. So basically, we can very clearly distinguish, distinguish which slit each individual electron goes through. So we have the, the beeper and the booper. <laughs> this is beep. Now, this is very definitely not Feynman's words. These are my own words. But the, the, the whole point is we have some way of distinguishing now which of the two things happens, or which of the two slits it passes through. So, I, I think it's a clever invention. So, so we're going to kind of like try to diagnose where things just go awry here. And we do this experiment, and we have beep, beep, boop, beep, boop, 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 beep, beep, boop, boop, whatever. And now, here's what we get. <laughs> Again, no rational way of predicting this. But that's what happens. So, somehow or another, the act of measuring what, what's occurring fundamentally changes the outcome of the experiment. We didn't peer into it. This happened. We did peer into it. This happens. There is just no fundamental way of, of rectifying this at this point. It's, it's, you know, it'd be one thing if, like, we're nudging the electrons or, or if we're, like, you know, pushing them there and pushing them there to figure it out. But no, we're letting the electrons do their thing, but we're simply just taking a, a measurement halfway through to kind of get a feel for what's going on. But that fundamentally changes not only the results of the experiment, but, but, but therefore it fundamentally changes the behavior of the electrons. By measuring the experiment, we change the experiment. And, you know, do you see where, where this is really just nothing but, like, God's April Fool's prank on us? Like, this is just, there's, we're going into, like, you know, unexpectedness to just absolute bizarreness. That somehow or another, the act of measuring what's going on changes what's going on.